Well, I think one of the counterintuitive aspects of world-class leaders actually is Steve Jobs, in that I didn't even want to read his biography because I had such a bad image of him yeah. as a manager, actually. So I was like, I don't want to read it. It's mm. like, who wants to support this guy who's mm. been so obnoxious and whatever, and succeeded by being obnoxious. But then when you read it, I actually realized that his theory of being an incredibly demanding boss, or the way he was, as being incredibly demanding, means that A players stay with you and the B players leave. So right. the A player is actually happy if he knows that the boss is so incredibly demanding and mean that he'll only give you a nod of approval, one sentence in three months, but that means enough. Right. Um, so I think there's, there are different types of good leaders for different types of companies and employees. So mm -hmm. I think, and when I read that book, I thought, God, you know, all the time I was holding myself back, trying to be a really nice guy and not being as, 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 as brutal as my, some of my instincts would have let me be, um, I think sometimes that was actually wrong because you shouldn't suffer mediocrity. At mm. least you can't suffer it in fast growth, highly competitive businesses. Yeah, but do you think Steve Jobs got away with it because of the fact that he was literally changing the world so it was a great yeah. place, a good place to want to be because he had the op? No, I think there are, no, I've seen other examples of, okay. of companies that are less, uh, absolutely extraordinary, yeah. where, yeah. Um, you know, very demanding leaders do manage to build great teams because people, yeah. Actually, there are certain types of people who are so driven. They only want to be with the guy who's not, yeah. who's not paying lip service to everyone, and they also want. They don't want to be carrying baggage. No. So I think that's the other thing. There are lots of companies where there where there is too long a tenure. People stay yeah. for too long. Yeah. Um, so in companies where, you know, the, the average people are thrown out. I'm sorry, it sounds very brutal, but actually, it's Darwinian and, uh, and yeah. it gets you a, a very dynamic if, if slightly brutal culture, but yeah. that's Darwinism. Yeah, absolutely right. Um, and grade A people want to work for grade A people, that's particularly that's bosses absolutely. as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you might be more demanding than you say, because um, at London Business School, Brent, I, say, I see you say, um, quote, um, uh, I see my style as demanding in a way that's still encouraging. Um, and at Google Talks, you once said, and I quote, I think my real claim to fame is in CIO magazine, I was rated as the third hardest CEO to work for, for the CTO, the third most impatient and most unreasonable. So, but yeah, people did love working for you. So is it a fine balance? I mean, if you're just a pain um, in the ass manager to work for, but you don't get the I results. Think, I, th I think one of those CTOs said, and I, I read this in some interview, he didn't say it to me, but I was quite um, touched that he said it. He said. He worked so hard because every time something wasn't working, I'd come over and I'd look so disappointed. Um, right. But I think what that really means is everyone in the company knew I cared so much. And then the other thing was the willingness to both focus on the strategic big picture stuff, but also know in micro detail, know until we were pretty big, what everyone was working on. Mm. And I still remember being able to introduce like t one tech guy who was having a problem with something sitting next to another guy and they just didn't talk because they're tech guys. And I said, well, like, I think he's seen a problem like this two weeks ago. Why don't you guys talk? And in 10 minutes, this guy had solved the problem. They solved each other's problems. Right. But so it's having the CEO who cares that much about what everyone's doing. Mm. Um, but yes, to do that, you've got to be impatient and unreasonable and you've got to process lots of information yeah. very quickly, which means you can't always have time mm. for pleasantries. <clears throat> Um, mm. And I'm sure I could have been better at the hurrah, you've done a good job. But mm. I, I think people say I've got slightly better at that now.